Hello, welcome back. I know what you might be thinking. Girl, we've seen this video already. And yes, you did. But it was one of the first videos that we filmed and edited and it just wasn't quite up to our standards. So we took it down, reworked our magic. Well, Sean reworked his magic and we're posting it again. Also, I wanted you to know if you're seeing this and maybe didn't see it the first time it went up, we filmed this back in May, actually like days after coming back from Morocco and it's now October. But it was still a fantastic trip and everything that I said in this video holds true. So enjoy. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, today we're doing our Marrakesh haul. We actually just got back from uh, Morocco like yesterday. Like came in, crashed hard, woke up fresh, went and picked up the cat, food because the refrigerator is empty, like just got back. And I wanted to do this video while everything was still fresh in my mind because when doing a research for the trip, I found that a lot of people didn't give prices for things, especially the larger things like the rugs and the pillows. They gave information but not actually prices what they paid. So I wanted to create a video where I told you the price of every single thing, showed you everything we bought, gave you all the prices because although it doesn't mean that I paid the best price, it just gives you somewhere at least to start. And there are rugs in this video, but we're gonna save them for the end and we're gonna go through everything else, okay? So let's just get started. So first up, we have some olives that we got in the souk. Olives are like served with every meal. I even had eggs with olives. Moroccan meals tend to start with some type of salad or a variety of salads at a couple places we had like 12 plates of salads and bread before our main meal and the olives were so good so we got two packs of olives one is seasoned and one is not and together they were about 40 durham which is about four dollars uh, in general with the moroccan durham i approached everything as just dropping a zero and that made it akin to what it was in american so if it was 100 dirham it was ten dollars if it was 1500 dirham it was 150 dollars if that makes sense i'll put some type of uh thing on the screen so that also helps it make sense but that's kind of how I'm gonna do the prices. So olives with every meal basically, and they were so good. Um, our very first, oh, and a lot of haggling. So you will see people discuss a lot of haggling in their videos. Some of the stuff we bought, we did haggle hard for. The haggling is real, but there were other things where the prices were just a little bit more reasonable and kind of set as they were. So the olives were priced as they were. There, were, there was no haggling for the olives. Our first foray into the soups actually um, was on our first day there and the first thing we bought were these tiles. It was our first you know, chance to get our feet wet with the haggling. Uh, all the Moroccan tiles are handmade and hand painted. So although I live in a New York City apartment now, hopefully one day I won't and I would love to just throw, even if they don't match with what's happening, just throw that little splash of tile in um they're all like i said all hand painted and for these we paid about 30 uh 350 dirham which is about 35 dollars and they're beautiful they're hefty um most people in the souks know obviously that you're not from there and you're traveling so they did wrap everything up for us we just unwrapped it for the video uh and then you know whether that was a good price or not I don't know I think we probably could have paid less because that's about uh, seven six fifty seven dollars per tile which if you were tiling your bathroom at home that would be some expensive tile the cat just jumped out the closet <laughs> um, so I think we probably could have done better but like I said that was our very first you know, jumping into the haggle. Um, I don't remember where he started, um, but we tried to treat every price, their, their initial price, 
we tried to get as close to half of that as possible as the price we felt okay with paying. So because I think we overpaid a little bit, he threw in this small little tile as a like, I scammed you and to make you feel better about it and to like make me feel better about it, I'm gonna give you a little extra tile. So um, that was the tiles. Those were our first, like I said, our first adventure into the souks. Um, one of the second things we got uh, was this bag and this uh, little thingy here, which I'll explain in a second. So when we first went into the souks, we happened upon this guy because one of the things I really wanted um, from watching and researching was a metal bag. Lots of people always show the straw bags, but those are kind of available everywhere in America, different price points. They're becoming really, really popular. So I was not as much interested in those as I was the metal bags. And even some of the metal bags come with, um, I don't want to call them shells, but like stone. But yeah, like pieces of stone on. But I also figure eventually with wear and tear, those pieces of stone might fall out. So I ended up opting for something uh, more plain. And I love gold. Gold is always a thing, you know? Uh, so the bags um, all kind of look the same from the outside. But once you flip them open, it just seems like not as much care was taken with the finishing of the inside of the bags. So this one is finished in a red velvet and it was one of the nicer ones that I saw and it still isn't perfect. Uh, so instead of getting multiples, I opted to just get this one. And the first day we went into the souks, we found this guy. Uh, he was very easy going. He's like, you know, please come in, take a look, no pressure because nearer the center of the square there can be a lot of call i don't want to call it cat calling but kind of the cat calling but for shopping like please take a look come on in please look at what i have go in don't be afraid excuse me come on i give you good price it was a lot of that and he made it a point uh to not do that so we really appreciated him and we stumbled across i didn't buy this bag uh, the first time we happened upon that guy. Actually, there's a picture of us with that guy. We'll make sure we put it um, Didn't buy the bag when I initially saw him. We actually stumbled upon him another day. And he said, he remembered us and said, oh, you guys are from New York. I remember you. And we like, oh, yeah. So we took that opportunity to go ahead and go in. So I got this bag. And then I also got this, which he explained to us was a um, coal like eyeliner coal um, applicator and holder so it comes in two pieces it has what looks like some stone uh, on it metal working and you would keep the eyeliner inside and dip this in and pull it out and use this to apply whether that's true or not I don't know but I thought that it would be pretty as just a trinket to have around the house so for both of these pieces together there are no separate prices they kind of encourage you to buy more than one thing and then kind of come up with a collect you bargain for a collective price not like this is 35 and this is 15 and let's come together it is let's pick everything you want and then let's discuss a price after so i don't remember where he started for these two i believe it was somewhere in the 200 dollar range so about 2000 dirham but what we ended up paying was about 85 dollars or 850 dirham for these two pieces a lot of my research said that the further away you are from the city center you are more likely to get a deal and people would be uh, a little less aggressive and that did ring true there were shops to and from our uh riyadh that we would pass regularly and you know sometimes they said come on in some most of the time they didn't say anything uh but i really wanted a set of beads to not wear on my neck but to display on the wall and we stopped in one shop and i thought that we were gonna get like you know 25 dollar deal and that's not exactly what happened i think this guy when he started um negotiating for these uh, was somewhere again in the $200 range so 2,000 dirham I ended up paying about 80 dirham or I'm sorry 800 dirham which is about $80 another thing in my research that I decided I really wanted was a pair of leather shoes leather is like a really big thing in Morocco uh, we did not visit the tanneries we stopped by a random shop um, 
was tried on a couple of styles and then the guy's like oh come with me I'll take you to uh, another shop that I have so I think it wasn't really his shop I think the shop is owned by maybe multiple people and then somehow everyone gets a little bit of the proceeds of people buying because I don't think in, even the shop that we were in initially was his shop because we were alone for a good while before he showed up um, neither here nor there we found it was like a real store that he took us to uh, with two sides and there was an older gentleman outside still putting shoes together like it was it was a legitimate store so we ended up with three pairs of shoes Sean got house shoes they are all of the shoes are all leather from the sole to the inside to the outer part uh, these are uh, house shoes so that they're a nice soft leather on the bottom and they have a little tassel and they're black suede then I got the blue a two-tone blue suede with a small design uh, here where the two leathers come together and although each shoe shows uh, this flip down it is not ever meant to be flipped up it's always meant to be worn as a slip on uh, so this and then I also got a black pony hair again all leather the leather bottoms uh, that are meant to be outside are a little harder but they are still leather and for all three pairs of shoes we paid 600 dirham which is about $60 and for leather shoes that I felt was a very fair and good price now probably they can be done cheaper I don't again I don't remember where he started with the price but we generally for each thing where we have well, there would be at least a four time back and forth they give a price you give a price they give a price you give a price and then you kind of whittle it down in those last few minutes of like this is my final price you know kind of thing these scarves <laughs> we paint a picture we're in the souks we're a little bit lost we're looking for a carpet particular carpet store i believe and a young man says to us, you know, um, there's a color festival where people come down from the mountains just for a couple of days and they've got all the colors. And we're like, oh, okay, interesting. He wants to show us how to get there. Now, all the research says, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're in the midst of researching a trip. All the research says, when someone says, let me show you or follow me, don't go because they're going to ask you for money so we didn't want to follow him you know it's fine We're, we've got nothing else to do we can get lost if we find the color festival we find it if not fine a few minutes you know so we say no thank you to him whatever then okay we wander around for a little while and say well you know maybe the color festival would be interesting you know for a youtube video color is beautiful whatever let's go see if we can find it we walk for a little while um, and say to a shop owner who we assume won't leave his shop you know he's and he's trying to sell his wares in his shop and he says no problem no money for me I'll show you I'll show you yes the color festival I'll show you no money no problem follow me so we follow him and we do make it to um, it's not a color festival it was just the area in the souks where they dye the fabrics for the scarves they use um, natural ingredients uh, to create the colors and they showed us you know all of the named all of the different types of things they use um, henna saffron uh, indigo you know all of these different natural things that they use to color the fabrics and the scarves aren't made out of silk from silk worms they're made of vegetable silk or like a cactus fiber um, and they're all this the colored uh, silks before they're weaved into the scarves are all hanging from the ceiling and the souk and it's beautiful uh, and we end up getting two scarves for the two we ended up paying 240 dirham which is about $24 now like I said we live in New York City these are five dollars on the streets all the time but the color was really beautiful so we got this like this light blue royal blue with the dipped of the darker end the guy tied it on your head gave you a whole experience um, we've got this um, darker blue again with the dipped into the darker edges like I said beautiful scarves so we do think that we overpaid for the scarves a bit and then once we were done overpaying for the scarves 
the guy who had led us there then of course comes up and says you know oh just a little something for me little something for me after he told us no money we gave him a dollar like the hustle is real and it is your job as a tourist to not get hustled okay they're going to try to hustle you not everyone certainly but you really have no idea going into it whether it's a hustle or not so you just have to be diligent always be polite but be diligent it's your money you're spending whatever so that was the scar the jardin marjolelle which is the ysl garden he used to live in the home uh, it was already there he lived there you know made it nice his partner created a foundation so that it's a very well maintained garden it has the blue walled building which is really a uh, berber museum berbers are native people to n native nomadic people to morocco the museum is actually really 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 good they had some amazing costumes and jewelry inside the museum unfortunately photography is not allowed but if you're there and you find yourself in the garden, you should definitely go into the blue building. Um, and then what opened in 2017 was an actual YSL museum that houses some of his work as well. Again, photography is not allowed, um, but it is beautiful and you can get a ticket for both. Um, so while in the gift shop, they also, they, we got a print, but it comes in this beautiful paper, which is actually really nice. Um, but we got a print. I'm sure you will have seen uh, Mr. St. Laurent did a set of like love paintings and he also did a set of like circus paintings. They sell them both as prints and as postcards and also have them displayed in the museum and in the garden. So we got from the gift shop of the museum a print of one of the circus themed I don't know I like elephants but I find them interesting and I thought the color was cool uh, so we got that and that was 250 dirham so about $25 uh, in the museum after the museum we were uh, just on the streets we had stopped to get a quick bite to eat and I had actually seen this guy in someone else's video uh, is a guy who told us he was from Senegal selling um, what we are calling a butterfly work butterfly print it's not a print butterfly art uh, the scene that is created is used he uses butterfly wings to create the scenes and he had different ones some more intricate than others and uh, you know with different color variations we liked this one I don't remember why but I still like it it did not travel that well because it wasn't rolled as tightly as the other one but I think once pressed into a frame it'll be beautiful um, we did ask how do you collect these butterfly wings sir and he says oh you know i'll wait till they die and then i collect them could that is that true i don't know is that you know doesn't really seem uh an economical way to do anything but who knows uh for this we paid a hundred dirham or about ten dollars uh, from a nice man in the square so it, whatever it's it's nice we think it's cute I, I didn't say this was going to be a long video but you can tell from the thing that this is going to be a long video but i'm trying to give you as much information as possible anywho we did not stay in the city the entire time we also went out to the desert the desert tour is kind of a day one stop take a look let's take some pictures buy a couple things spend the night in a Riyadh day two again in the car take some pictures stop at a museum buy some things and then you finally make it to the desert so we made a couple of purchases along the way while out one of the first places they took us to uh, was a collective of women selling argan oil argan oil is a very very big product in Morocco um, it's like everywhere I, there was no negotiation on these particular prices because these women are outside of the city and what the price is is what the price is uh, we got one in a spray bottle that's mixed with gardenia and I as I'm sitting here right now I've put it on my body at least four times it smells so good and this was about 160 dirham or about $16 and then this one is just pure argan oil with no scent uh, and I believe that I paid about 200 dirham or about $20 for this one. My plan is to just use it on my face. I have been using Argan oil from Whole Foods, but this was definitely a better bargain. Uh, the ladies even gave us a quick, de a quick uh, demonstration on how they 
you know, take the seeds and crack them open. They use uh, two, there's two almonds when they crack the nut open. One of them they roast and use to make food argan oil, like cooking oil, and the other they don't roast and they use that to make uh, the cosmetic oils. Uh, they had a ton of products for sale, but you know, we, we spent, we bought a lot of things. <laughs> so that was one of the stops we made out in the desert. Another stop we made out in the desert was to this town that um, basically everybody in the town makes pottery. Um, they showed us where they keep the clay and kind of in the ground and mix it with water to even make the items. They then let them dry in the sun and they had a bunch of stuff drying out in the sun. And they showed us the kilns. They even had a kiln going. Um, fire it once to make the clay hard and then they paint and glaze and fire it again. Um, it was really interesting and there was so much of it. This was another place where the prices were pretty much fixed. It was not a moment of negotiation so for all of the things you see here we got four bowls that are all very similar uh, and they aren't a set per se but they are similar sizes and they are very similar in the designs that they were painted in same for um, these three little guys down here not not identical but still very similar uh, and then we also got two cups and I really 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 love these cups so for all, that's four, five, six, seven, nine pieces, we paid about 1,000 dirham or $100. I don't remember. Each thing did have a price. They even had a price sheet. Uh, but collectively, we paid about $100 for those things. Oh, on the shopping tour, we also stopped at a carpet weaving, which again, I'm going to save the carpets for the end. We'll get there once back in the city we did go on a shopping tour and a lot of the places that the shopping tour guy took us to were luckily places we had already found he took us to the same shoe person he took us where we got our rug from we ended up at that same rug place but one of the places that we had not visited because we wanted to make sure we went to a good one was an apothecary these are the places where they usually have the uh, incense and spices kind of in those cone shapes in the drums outside um, uh, we went to one and a woman gave us a very thorough explanation of a lot of different products inside she even had the we didn't get footage of it because we were so enthralled and we were listening and thought it was so interesting but that in those other videos you see people they'll rub something on their hand and then they'll do the nose thing we even did that it smelled like uh, Vicks vapor rub but only like natural if that makes sense but the apothecary was very cool and we got quite a bit of stuff um, the most expensive thing we got was this prickly pear oil, which both according to the lady in the apothecary and Google is going to make you beautiful, okay? And it's also a little pricey. I found a couple products that had the prickly pear oil as just one of the ingredients and they were, you know, $4 for 20 milliliters of product. I don't know exactly how much this is, but this is just the pure oil. I think she said this might be a year supply or a six month supply but you only need a couple of drops on your face this was uh 300 dirham or about 30 dollars the most expensive thing we got from the apothecary we also got saffron which if you are a person who cooks and knows what saffron is you'll know that it is very expensive in america and we got this um, little size here which is quite a bit actually from my understanding you only need like a piece or two and it kind of like turns up the flavor on everything turn it up a notch you know what I'm saying one one strand of that and this little thing was 20 bucks $20 or 200 dirham then we also got saffron lip balm which she did let us try which was very soothing actually and this was about eight dollars or 80 dirham then we also got these two spice packets. This one was a Moroccan curry, and I have notes. Hold on, because I want to tell you exactly what it's called. It's called Ras El Hanout. Ras El Hanout, y'all. And they, the lady described this as a spice that they use, let back cooks use because it makes everything taste good. And it smells amazing. And each one of these packs was about $3.50 or 300 no 35 dirham 35 dirham about three dollars and fifty cents for each pack 
And then we also got some Moroccan mint tea. Moroccan mint tea was everywhere. It's really just green tea with some mint tossed in, but here it is all mixed up. And we actually had some of this tea at the, apothe at the apothecary while they were explaining everything to us. We paid about $5 or 50 dirham for this packet of tea. Uh, the hammam. Oh, while in Morocco, please get yourself a hammam. We had ours at uh, our Riyadh, and it's just, I mean, it was like being in a, in a steam room, and they wet you down and cover you in soap. You know, nude, slightly nude, depends on the place. Uh, and just scrub all your skin, all the dead skin off of you. And it, you could not, it, it was amazing. I definitely recommend it. And we had all had hammams by the time we went on the shopping tour. So when she sh showed us this hammam kit, we were all like, yes, we need one of those. So this is black soap, a pumice for your feet and then uh, a scrub to actually scrub your body. And this was about 112, 100, 120 or 130 dirham, which makes it about 12 or $13. I don't remember exactly. Um, winding down the apothecary, crystal deodorant. This is not a Moroccan specialty. This is available in America as well. Uh, it's just natural. You wet it, put it in your underarms. You know, this was about 50 dirham or $5. And then we got a couple of solid fragrance cubes. This one in particular is amber. We got amber and we had uh, lavender, jasmine, jasmine, one of the two. But you just rub it on your skin and it's fragrance and it smells amazing. Uh, like I said, we got three of those and those were $5 per cube. And we got two, two amber, one jasmine. So that was the apothecary. Now, before we get to the carpets very quickly, I'm just gonna do what we got at the airport because we grabbed a couple of last minute things at the airport. So at the airport, I collect magnets. I try to grab one every time I am somewhere that's not where I live. Uh, I started kind of late, so I gotta go back and redo some. But I did get two magnets at the airport. They're just photographs of uh, some of the doorways in Marrakesh and these were five euros each which is about six dollars six dollars the euro is a little bit stronger than the dollar although we had lots of tea and didn't look at a lot of tea cups we couldn't really find any while in the souks that we really liked um, but we did find these two at the airport they were three dollars and fifty cents or three dollars and fifty cents but in euros, three euros and 50 cents. Uh, and we got just, just these two at the airport because we thought they were cute. And then lastly, we got cooking Oregon oil. This was 40 euros. The Moroccan salads that come, like I was talking about with the olives, they're just so fresh and so delicious. Uh, we've already been to the store and got tomatoes and cucumbers to try and recreate a Moroccan salad because they were just so good. So we got a bottle of the cooking oil. And next is what everybody has been waiting for, carpets and pillows. Now, we went to the same carpet place three times, two times, two times, once on our own, and then another time with the shopping tour. We also, like I said, stopped in the desert. So let's start with the pillows. And I'm gonna group them how we paid because like I said, everything was pick what you like and then let's come up with a price for all those things together. So for the first set of cushions, we got this guy which is just wool now we did learn that the black line is not wool because there's no way uh the black usually black wool the black colors and carpets and and pillows are just the natural blackness of the sheep the sheep's wool but that's not the case uh in this situation it's a I'm not sure if it's a synthetic fiber because again there was a language barrier but it's not wool but it, they use whatever it is so that it's color fast because everything is just wool you can wash it so they use the black so that it's color fast and doesn't fade uh, when you decide to wash this so we got this one then we got a couple of cactus silk options so we got this white one 
that I think is really pretty. It has uh, some orange and turquoise and brown and kind of has this um, faded blue background texture. And these actually we asked them to add zippers to because they did not initially have zippers and they were very kind about adding zippers for us and then wrapped everything up. I'll show you one that we still have wrapped and how they wrapped it up. We carried these all in um, extra suitcases. We did not ship anything. So my boyfriend and I both packed smaller bags and then put them into larger luggage that was empty. So our clothes were all in the smaller bags and then we had another bag that was empty. So we left with two and came back with four. Well, we left with four, but you know what I'm saying. So we didn't ship anything. Uh, everything was packed small enough where we could bring it in our bags. So we got that guy. And we got another cactus. This is a kind of orange that they would have used saffron henna they would have used henna i believe on this uh kind of orange color again with the zipper and then same kind of deal but just in yellow with the blue accent that we really really liked as well and then this one that we've already stuffed and sat on the couch was actually very much like one they had on their own couch the place where we bought these was uh, a collective of villages this was the way it was explained to us like several villages in the Atlas Mountains have the women making the pillows making the rugs and then they bring them all here and they sell them all so it wasn't just one supplier it's a couple of different suppliers so that is five pillows we paid 2,000 dirham which is about $200 um, the initial starting price because I do remember was about 38 hundred dirham so about three hundred and eighty dollars so the, a little bit of negotiation we got them down to two hundred and that was using a credit card and with them adding uh, zippers to the cactus silk pillows so that was that this like I said was our second trip to this same place on this same trip because now this is during the shopping tour so the other people who were joining us uh, on our trip in general had come and we were now a group of five people we ended up buying a, a, as a group there were two other rugs that were purchased I'm sorry three other rugs that were purchased and about four other pillows and we had already purchased stuff from them as well so I think that they were a lot more uh, generous with the prices this go round. so then we ended up with the also these three pillows and these uh, my boyfriend Sean gave the guy a flat price. He said, I'm going to tell you what I want to pay for these and you tell me if it's okay. And he said $150 or 1500 dirham and the guy said, that's fine. So this uh, is a killum actually uh, more, like, where this is the cactus silk, there are different styles. Uh, it's double sided, both killum and they're both different. And then this side has been um, accented with the orange tassels to pick up the orange in the killum design and the little sequins that are normally seen in like uh, the wedding blankets, those white wedding blankets that are really popular. It's uh, a couple of those have been added. Then this one is very similar because it also has um, the tassels in the fringe from the wedding blankets. And then this is again a more of a killum style uh, rug and it is double sided as well. I'm saying rug but they use the same processes for making the rugs as making the pillows. So just bigger this is a rug. And this double sided one that we all love. So uh, for actually one of the other girls that were with us on the trip she wanted pillows. She actually went down and picked out most of these and then we all just ended up loving them and taking them. And this is another double-sided uh, killum style piece. So then we also, like I mentioned before, on our desert tour, we also stopped um, at a rug shop manufacturer. I'm not sure what you would call it, but it was a, a guy and he had uh, a couple of women come in and demonstrate to us how they make the rugs. They even let us tie um, a couple of knots. And he did show us how they make both um, the more looped style which would be like this uh, where each piece of yarn or not yarn but uh, wool is hand looped and how they would do the weaving more on uh, this style 
which is a little more akin to how you weave a shirt. So they did have women um, there and they showed us how they did, how they made both and they let us do some. Um, and we did end up buying a runner from that nice man. There's a picture of all of us with him as well that I'll insert. Uh, and that rug we've already uh, laid down in our bedroom and we love that one. And that one, I think he started, the negotiation started with uh, one of the other young women getting a rug as well so we were negotiating for both so i don't remember exactly where we started before this runner that we've added to our bedroom we paid 37.50 dirham like 3750 dirham which is about 375 dollars uh, for this runner here and we really like that one it's got some really amazing texture it's got that like it's it's multiple skills in one uh, rug so it's like some of the stuff is woven some of it is embroidered and some of it is wool that's just been uh, hand knotted and it's beautiful he explained to us that uh, some of the women can have different skill set and they call it a uh, silver or gold fingers and he said that this one which could be a lie but was a gold finger rug like the woman who who created this rug um, had lots of experience at least 20 years of experience I think the gold fingers were um, and we really, really, really like it. We were really uh, happy with that purchase. And that guy uh, out in the desert tour definitely had prices that were more affordable than in the city. So if you plan to go to Marrakesh and you do plan to go on a desert tour and you plan to buy a rug, I will wait and see if your desert tour takes you to a rug dealer, see what he has. If you find one there you love, I would go with that one because you're going to get a better price than in the city. Not to say that a good deal can't be had in the city, um, but yeah, the desert guy uh, was best. So now for our piece de la resistance. That's wrong, but you know what I mean. We got a rug uh, in, in the city. The first rug that we got on the first or second day we were there. So this is what the package looks like. This is a about a 10 by 7 two, and two runners and a prayer rug and they wrap it all up into this bundle here and we were able to fit this in our suitcase. Uh, yeah, so let's open this up. So here we are in our living room. I'm gonna show you that package again. Again, so impressed how small they got that. And they actually sewed the plastic together. So as you watch us uh, unroll this bundle, you'll see that we have the prayer rug and the other two runners along with the big uh, 10 by seven um, rug here. And we hemmed and hawed about a different a couple of different styles but ultimately this one won out because the color really matches well with the couch uh, so this negotiation for all four rugs started at twenty eight hundred dollars and he did this negotiation fully in american dollars and in the end we paid sixteen hundred dollars for all four pieces and with a little bit of research before and after we felt pretty good uh, about that price and i just read this rug is so beautiful to me it's a more vintage style uh, the two runners, this one with the gray, we ended up putting in our front hall and the one with the orange and gray alternating, we put in the kitchen and we are really, really happy with what we got. Yeah, beautiful rugs. Hi guys, so we were editing the video and realized we didn't film an outro. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope that the video was as helpful as I planned for it to be. If you recently been to Morocco you recently you plan to go you've recently come back like let us know in the comments how you felt about the video what did you pay let's keep the discussion going so that we can all be a little more informed and be sure to hit the subscribe button because we do have a Moroccan vlog coming as well as a Madrid vlog because we went to Madrid both at the front and end of the Marrakesh trip so thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye and be sure to hit the subscribe button because we do have a Moroccan vlog coming as well as a Madrid vlog because we went to Madrid both at the front and end of the Marrakesh trip. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!